Hey guys and girls, how are you going? So nice to see you again. It's uh, Mark coming here of course and we're going to be talking some camera gear. Now uh, today we're talking about some new Nikon releases. They've got obviously the new uh, macro lenses out of the 105 2.8. That's uh, going to be a magnificent lens, very professional. Has internal image stabilization which is very exciting. I wasn't aware that was coming along too. Uh, so that's great. And uh, put all that together with the Nikon Z uh, workmanship and beautiful uh, lens quality. I'm sure the professionals are going to love it. They also have a 50mm version out, uh, which is a little bit more compact and smaller and lighter and cheaper. And one of the two I'm recommending is actually, believe it or not, the little 50mm macro lens for the majority of people. Now I'm not suggesting that you're not worthy of the uh, 105, I'm not saying that you can't afford it, nor am I saying that it won't give you great images. What I'm recommending only is that the 105 I think is really more useful to those who are a professional macro photographer. So if you can justify it via your wedding photography with the little uh, rings and uh, trinkets and accessories, or you're a specific maybe a museum photographer where you're doing small artifacts like little coins and uh, items that you need to get beautiful photos of represented. Or perhaps, uh, for example, you're a professional uh, creature photographer, little bugs and caterpillars and stuff like that, and that is actually your living. If you're doing it for a living, you want the best you can get. I reckon that's pretty much uh, close to the best you can get, uh, certainly in an icon system at the moment, and I think you won't be disappointed as a pro. Uh, but for the general purpose public, like uh, let's say myself, I'm not a professional macro photographer. I do like to do macro photography, and I do, well, quite a bit of it, I think, but it probably wouldn't ever be more than a couple of times a month. So over the course of the year, would I want to justify, say, spending over $1,600 Australian uh, on a lens I use a couple of times a month? Well, I don't think it's really worthwhile for me. And even the uh, looking at the 105's portrait capability at 2.8, it would make quite a very good portrait lens, in fact. Uh, but the problem is I have so many other lenses that would do as good a job, if not better. So apart from the primes like 85mm 1.8, the new 85 1.2 coming out very soon, which make great portrait lenses, I've also got this uh, big one here, the 70 to 200 s lens. And at 70 to 200 of course, I'm covering that 105 1.2 aperture anyway. Plus, I can go either wider or I can go longer as well as an option in one lens. So really, for versatility, I'd encourage people to spend bigger money on something like that with its massive versatility rather than something that really is specifically for macro photography only anyway. The uh, portrait aspect of it would be a novelty to use, but I say there are so many better options for portraiture than that. So uh, what I'm actually doing is highly re recommending the 50 for the majority of people out there. You're gonna, not only going to save money, but the real beauty of it is that it's quite a compact little lens. It's a little bit smaller than this, which is the 35mm 1.8. And being even smaller than this, what that's going to mean is it's going to be great to put in your bag as an accessory to your photography. So let's say you do the odd macro when it's available, or you let's say you're doing some... Um, uh, wildlife photography or landscape photography and you're hiking around and you do come across some interesting little creatures and bugs and you would like to get the photos where you could pull that out of your bag and it's not been a great burden in either weight, expense or camera bag space. So I think for versatility that's really where I think people should be going uh, for specifically a Z S man arrangement. So I just thought I'd put my you know, two bobs worth, as they say there, given my opinion on what's best value for people so they don't spend money on something they really never use or need. Uh, that's one aspect of it. Uh, the other thing I would like to talk to you about is the other two lenses come out, and that is they've got some pancake lenses come out, and we've got a bit more information on them. They're still development mode at the moment, but what they're telling us is that they are full frame, which is excellent. They are also uh, very compact. They're not as small as the old pancake lenses. The original pancake lenses were very thin and tiny. These are a little bit bigger, but I would imagine I'm just using this for illustration purposes because I obviously don't have one yet. But uh, the FTZ adapter in size is probably about where they're going in these new pancake lenses. It would probably be very similar, if it might be fractionally bigger, but not very much, and probably would certainly weigh no more than that. And uh, what I think the advantage of these lenses are is obviously for street photography. You, know, you want something compact, it's not intimidating, doesn't look like you've got some sort of a you know, big pervy lens on there to you know, do some damage to someone in the, in the distance. It looks like you're just taking a wide angle shot, which is exactly what you're doing. Uh, the uh, advantage of them also is they're lightweight and compact in your camera bag, so it's, you don't need a big camera bag to carry around. It could be something when you're doing some sort of incidental photography, if you like.
So you might go to a festival or something like that. You don't want to carry something big and heavy around because you want your hands free and you want to feel comfortable all day walking around. So that's a little you know, compact camera you can have with you now and you take uh, little snap photos and you know they're going to still be very good quality and you've got all the advantages of your Z-mount camera with you. So yeah, I'm loving the idea of them for the compactness. That's very convenient. For me, for compactness, I use these little primes, the 35s, 50s, uh, the 20 mil, uh, but that's because, you know, I take my very seriously and I know people are going to criticize the photos I put up so I like to have the best options available but at the same time I'm sure these lenses being specifically designed for the S-mount system are going to be very amazing and I've got to reserve my judgment on their quality of course until someone's actually got a hold of one and given some review that might even be myself. So the two of them that there are there's a 28mm f2.8 so it's easy to remember that it's 28-28 really isn't it? And uh, that one is an interesting lens, I think very interesting for its wide angle aspects on a full frame lens. It's not ultra wide, like a 20mm or a 14 to 24 but it's wide enough to be used as a versatile wide angle, say, landscape sort of lens. Uh, you can use it also for your uh, steady cams. So you've got, say, a steady cam arrangement or a Ronin S like I do. You've got that to stabilizer and you want to put a camera on that. This is where something very pancakey, very light and very uh, into the body dimensions of the camera come in very handy and it comes in handy for several reasons why that could be an interesting lens and I might even consider it. Uh, I've used a 20, uh, 28mm 2.8 in the past. Now this is back in the days when I was using the F mount lenses. I think I was using the D810 at the time for that and I had an AIS lens. So it was all manual focus, but it was a little compact lens about this size, and it was a 2.8 aperture, and it was a brilliant lens for taking videography. Because uh, what I found is, even though it was manual focus, let's face it, the DSLRs back in the day were crap at autofocus anyway, so you wouldn't rely on them for that. You'd want to manually focus. So I'd manually set the focus and just work with that. But it was great for balance, because it was so close to the body of the camera, the plane there, that you were never disturbing uh, your uh, balance. Like if you use a zoom and you extend it out and the barrel comes out then all of a sudden the balance is all chaos and uh, out of whack. If you go put a, let's say you're using a um, filter, circular polarizer filter, you're inside you don't want it on because it's making everything too dark. Uh, when you go outside you need to screw on your polarizing filter. We're using an illustration here of a cap as if it was a filter but once you put that extra weight on, that extra glass and metal, what tends to happen is it's throwing the balance out a little bit again. So you've got something that's so compact and so tight into the camera body where most of the weight is, anything you accessorize, whether it be a hood, whether it be a lens or a filter or something with a lens cap, it's not going to upset your balance. And it means you're not constantly fiddling with your Ronin and adjusting and rebalancing and resetting. You can just put your little accessory on and keep going and the balance is not going to be interfered with. So these pancake lenses are an actual wonder for uh, that sort of a setup and could be very exciting. So I just thought you uh, might not have considered that aspect of using them. You might be thinking just street photography and uh, the fact that they're light and compact, but that's actually a wonderful bonus for your Ronins and your, and your stabilizers as well. So not have to constantly tinker with them because that little adjustment you put on the end is not going to make any difference to your balance. It also keeps the whole rig nice and compact too, so uh, that's also handy. Uh, I don't like to use zooms on Ronins if I can avoid them, because as soon as the barrel extends, should they do so, that's a real disaster. It throws the balance out and it's a nightmare. Fortunately, the 14 to 24 doesn't have that issue now, the new one, the S version, the 2.8, but the uh, 24 to 70, if you're using that, well, it does. It does extend the barrel a bit and that will throw out your balance and drive you mental. So uh, yeah, a little lens like that, a 28mm uh, might be useful. Uh, the 40 again could be quite cool as a compact street photography lens or uh, festival lens. And that way I think you know, keep it small in your bag and light, doesn't bother you to carry it around, saves you having to try and use your mobile phone all the time. Uh, mobile phones uh, can be great in, the, in good circumstances, but in unfortunate circumstances they can be very disappointing. And of course, it's, so once you get familiar with how to use something and where all the buttons and layout is, you don't necessarily want to go back with your phone for a convenience of a camera that's lightweight. You might want to just use your camera all the time, and that makes it actually a very usable product for something small and light. Uh, so that's uh, something I wanted to chat about there. 
The other aspect of things I wanted to talk to you about today was the other end of the scale. We're talking about small and compact and wide. Uh, now I'd like to talk to you a bit more about this item here. Now I've been extensively using this quite a lot at the moment. It's the 70 to 200 S lens and it's a brilliant lens. I got no qualms with this thing. It has everything you want. It does everything you need and it's really quite a brilliant configuration. Now right now I've got the teleconverter on it, two times teleconverter. And I just want to re-emphasize how that this does not really interfere with the image that I can tell at all. Uh, it's it's a great investment, the $1,000 extra to give you double the focal length is much cheaper than buying a whole nother lens. So I was talking about that 100 to 400 lens earlier and I think that's actually a pretty interesting option for uh, doing anything like uh, your landscapes, uh, not so much landscapes, sorry, more like your sports action and animal photography. That's an awesome lens. But uh, this one here, it's up to 400 mils now anyway. You've got a 140 to 400 mils. You've also got your 70 to 200 when you want to do portraiture. And so this sort of a configuration here for $4,000 as a kit, roughly, uh, that's a very great bargain. So I'm highly recommending it. Now, recently I was using this for some uh, video footage. Yes, at 400 millimeters, handheld with my Z7 II. And obviously you've got the combination. I don't know exactly how the percentage is, but you're using the image stabilization on the lens and using some image stabilization on the uh, camera. I think it depends on the axis that you're using. But combined, man, that was so silky smooth. Handheld, I couldn't believe I could do it at 400 mils. I've always used tripods before. On this particular occasion, I was walking around a lake. I happened to just have the uh, camera and lens in my hand. I didn't have any... Uh, you know, monopod or tripod with me at the time because I was traveling light. I was actually walking the dog at the time and just hoping for something to come up. Come across a little spoonbill uh, fee feeding and there's shallows and it looked quite interesting. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll video its uh, movements. And so I tried hold, hand holding. I was uh, kneeling down using my knee as a bit of a brace and I was finding that I was able to video it, as I say, 400 mils of focal length and getting a reasonable smooth footage. Now I'll put some samples up. There's actually the full video. It's a two minute video uh, on my page anyway. If you want to have a look at it on my website, you'll see the full video. It's in 4K. I've had I shot it at uh, 50 frames a second, then slowed it down to 25. And the reason I slowed the footage down was because the thing was moving so damn quick. Like uh, these, um, Spoonbills, I've never noticed it before, but you know, they're wallowing for little snails and bugs or whatever into the shallow waters, but they're not going like mm, cruising along. It's like da 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 da. It's so fast, it was it blew me away how fast they move. So I had to slow the video footage down just so you could keep up and see what on earth he was doing. But uh, the fact that it was relatively smooth and I didn't need a tripod at 400 mils just boom blew my mind how good this system is, this Nikon system. Uh, so that's been very, very impressive. I also recently did some what I would call pseudo macro photography with the same system. So using the 400mm focal length with that teleconverter, I was able to get within a metre of a dragonfly and get what I think is an almost half decent macro photo. Now it's nothing like a real macro lens. I'm not trying to shout down the 105 uh, macro saying that I've, I've you know, equaled it. No way is it equal to that. But it's just something you can use in a pinch. And really, this is the sort of illustration uh, I want to work with here with you, is that you don't always need the macro lens. Sometimes you just need something that'll do something like that. It's good enough if you're doing it a few times a, a week or a month. So either having that little compact one or using a rig like this, we can get in nice and close to the subject. You can still get a reasonable rendition of a close-up shot. And I think they work quite well, and I'll put up sample photos of that Dragonfly for you, just to show you the versatility of something like a 70 to 200 with a teleconverter. You've got so many options that it's actually quite uh, mind-blowing. You almost wonder why you'd buy any other lens, really, other than something for a wide necessity. So anyway, I've got a, quite a range of lenses. You can see some of them here, but of course I've got more locked away in the cupboard. But I just wanted to illustrate that even with the new releases they've got now, they've got the 100, uh, and 100 to 400 millimeter. Uh, it's going to be an S lens. That's coming out shortly, I imagine before the end of this year. And that's uh, now I know it's an S lens and not just a, maybe a variable aperture lens. It might be an F4, I'm imagining. That will be a very impressive, you know, sports action slash, you know, animal photography lens. I like the fact that it'll be most likely compatible then with the teleconverter being an S lens, which means you can go up to 200 to 800. Now, uh, regardless of the aperture you end up with, the bottom line is you've got that focal length and that's really exciting. So that's the lens I'd probably be going for. Uh, the 400 and the 600 primes, 
Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous on these primes because I know how big they are. They're usually something monstrous like this and uh, you can barely lift them up and they're really a tedious, uh, nasty mess to bring around. I think really with these teleconverters we've got now, something like either this uh, 70 to 200 system here, we've got what, 140 to 400, or using that two times teleconverter on the 100 to 400, you end up with a 200 to 800. Well, what do I need a prime for really? You might get a bit brighter image, shallow depth of field or something, but with the really good ISO you get with the cameras today, does that really matter anymore? I wonder. So maybe back in the days of the DSLR you did, ISO probably rendering wasn't as good, and you really needed that shallow depth of field, that uh, I should say the uh, wider aperture to get some light, but nowadays just, you, know, you can crank up the ISO a bit, and we have technology such as, you know, uh, Topaz have those AI technology denoise systems to break down some noise for you, when you combine these and the image stabilization and the lower shutter speeds you can use, really I think we've got some super options where these big heavy primes are probably no longer essential at least for your wildlife photography. So I just thought I'd run you through my opinions on these. Uh, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. Please excuse me if you think you I'm coming along like that. No, I'm just recommending based on my use scenario, what would I want? What do I use now? And what do I think I might want to use in the future with this Nikon C system? And they're really the recommendations I'm putting forward. The one other recommendation I'll put forward, and it might sound a bit pushy again, so excuse this if it comes across a little bossy, but it's the idea of uh, getting rid of your DSLR system now. I mean, don't, don't wait, don't hesitate. There's no point anymore clinging onto your DSLR stuff saying, oh yes, but I have a love and attachment for it and it served me great for so many years and uh, you know, I got all these lenses and what would I do? Mate, dump them. Sell them now. I'm talking about giving them away. I'm talking about selling them on eBay or wherever it is you choose to sell, whatever resource you use. But sell them now while you can still get some decent money for them. Nikon are not going to continue with the F mount forever. Whatever they've got now, that's pretty much all you're ever going to have or get. All their technology and, and all their money and funds and interest is all going to go into this new mirrorless system. And now having used them myself, I can verify why. You've now got focusing over the entire frame area. You're no longer having to pick an area and then shift the camera and shoot to try and uh, you know, get your object in focus. That was so irritating. Now you can just pick anywhere. You can even pick it with your finger. Just point on the back of the... Uh, uh, screen and you pick your focus point. You've got brilliant autofocus both with uh, photography where you can choose uh, this automatic eye detect which will follow the eye of a subject everywhere they go. So the subject goes back, they go left, they go forward, they go right a little bit because they're a little wriggly. No longer does that affect your uh, field of focus anymore because it will just keep constantly following until it, find, until it locks the eye. Uh, then you've got the video function, where the video will just follow the subject anywhere you go extremely reliably. I remember doing video with my DSLRs. Oh, what a nightmare. You know, I just gave up on autofocus and would just use uh, manual focus anyway, because it was just pointless trying to use the autofocus. You might use the autofocus to acquire the image, but then if that image moved, you were screwed. So what a nuisance that was. So please... Uh, Work with me on this. I'm not trying to be bossy and then put down the DSLRs because I know that they serve me and you probably for a very long time well. But this is actually uh, a product I'm using. I have two Z cameras now, multiple S series lenses, and that's all I'm going to go with. I'm not going to buy another F mount lens or another DSLR again. And I highly recommend everybody to sell out of that system now while you can still get some decent funds for them and then reinvest into the uh, Nikon Z system. Or if you choose to go Sony, I've got no problem with that. That's fine. I've used Sony cameras. They're great. If you choose to go Canon with the EOS system, go with Canon. They make some great stuff too. Go with their uh, new you know, R3 or whatever it's called. There's some brilliant cameras uh, with Canon and with Sony as well. I have no issue with you uh, using those or choosing that system. I'm not going to take it personally. I use Nikon because I had to make a choice. I had to make a transition into mirrorless, and I chose to go with something I was familiar with, and I don't regret it. So uh, if you wish to go with Nikon, I highly recommend you do so. I've got two Z cameras, I love them. I love all the S lenses. So uh, please don't be hesitant to uh, move on to the mirrorless system. I can promise you, you won't regret it. Even if that means going from two former DSLR cameras and 10 lenses down to one good DSLR camera, I mean, sorry, one decent Z system camera and uh, maybe only two or three lenses, that's still going to end up being an ultimately a better system for you than all the other DSLR equipment you had before. 
because it just is so much a superior system. So that's all I really have to say today. I don't want to bore you any longer with my rants, but thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a, a good day.